What up, players? It's Warbots Tail in this mud. I haven't done one of these um, tutorials in a while, not since the Doom Wheel, and I thought I'd do one on my um, Farseer and Warlock Council, painting them up in different colors. So the goal is that I've got the Farseer and Warlock in fine cast, which means you get one fine cast Farseer and three Warlocks. And so what I decided to do was paint them up as if each one came from a different craft world. So this is the blue and yellow craft world of Ianden. So this is the first one, and I decided that in order to tie them all together, I'm going to give them similar Wraithbone armor and weapons. So they're all going to kind of have this um, bony colored um, armor and weapons, and um, basing, of course. It's all going to be the same to kind of tie them in together, but their, their colors are going to be vastly different. You can see I just applied the basing material to the the base of the, the uh, grass flock so it's still drying I wanted to get this video up so so I'm making it right now so stay tuned follow along you don't have to use this model you can use one of the other models if you have a farseer or a warlock lying around most of the techniques will remain the same and um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments any of that stuff and uh, take care and enjoy the rest of the video Okay, so I've got my primed warlock here, ready for his base coats, and like I said, I'm going to be painting this guy up in uh, Ian Den it's color scheme, which means blue and yellow. Uh, I don't like the over, like like the really dominant yellow, like the guardians I've seen painted have like real, like they're all yellow and they only have like blue helmets. So I'm going to kind of go opposite and give this guy blue robes with a yellow helmet. So what I'm going to do is I've got my two colors for blue. I'm going to base in Fenris gray yellow and then dark sun ha <laughs> of course so i'm gonna paint the robes in fenris gray and then i'm gonna paint the outer part of the helmet uh the the upper part with uh and then dark sun and then the inside with fenris gray okay so i'm gonna go do that and we will sh we will see what it looks like when we get done Okay, I also decided when I was painting this to paint the top knot astronomic on gray. And the reason for that is because we're going to start shading the robes in just a couple steps. So um, we're going to be shading the, the top knot the same way. So I've got the helmet, the shoulder armor, the back of the neck armor all painted in Yand and Dark Sun, and the robes in Fenris Gray. Now what we're going to do is we're going to paint over the Fenris Gray, we're going to paint Regal Blue. So anything that's Fenris Gray, we're going to paint Regal Blue. And once that is dry, you're going to wash all of the recesses with a Suermin blue. So here's the Regal blue. It's a nice, uh, deep, dark blue color. And then you're going to paint a uh, Suermin blue right here is the Citadel wash over that. Okay. Then when you're doing that wash, you can also use Griffin Sepia on the yellow. And Griffin Sepia is a nice um, light red, reddish color it's not as red as Baal red definitely and not as red as ogre and flesh wash so it should shade the yellow nicely and um, also one more thing is after painting the top knot astronomicon gray you're gonna um, well while you're washing the robe with a sermon blue you're also gonna put that into the top knot so it's gonna have like a deep blue in the shadows between the lines okay so I will see you when all of those steps are finished all right, so I just kind of went crazy with more of the base coats and shadings just so that I wouldn't have to stop between each clip, but I just decided to do one base coat and shade for each section. So I'm going to tell you what I continued doing. The belt, the holsters, all this leathery stuff I painted Calton Brown. And um, I tried to do all the amulets, all the settings and amulets, and all of the bone armor and the weapons. I think one thing I'm going to have in common with all of the warlocks and the farseer is that I want their bone uh, the wraith bone to be very prominent on all four of the models to help unify because they're all gonna have different color schemes. So for the wraith bone, I used denim stone and then washed with griffin sepia, um, just like I did for the for the yellows. And then um, what else? I painted the wiring and the under part of this black. Then I did uh, shining gold over. Uh, I used Calton Brown this time, uh, just to try something different. And then I painted the gemstones. Some of the gemstones I painted in Warlock Purple. 
and some of them I painted in this hawk turquoise. I also painted this amulet on the front, hawk turquoise. And it's also what I'm going to make the crystal weapon, hawk turquoise. For the uh, crystal blade effect, which I really, really love. Try to do it on as much Eldar as possible, I just think it's a really great effect. Um, okay, so there's all your base coats for this Ian then color scheme, the blue and the yellow. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight up I'm gonna highlight up the robes, and um, I've been looking up the, the color schemes for Eandon because um, I want to make sure I get it right. So uh, I found a different, a couple different sources on the Games Workshop website. The the best one that I could find for the for the blue of the Eandon uh, color scheme is the new fine cast Altart, which looks like this guy with the wings so so he's got a very uh, blue armor um, overabundance of armor with yellow accents just like how I'm making this warlock model and looking at it it looks like the next step up from regal blue looks like it's gonna be um, enchanted blue for highlights but it looks like it's really only extreme highlights enchanted blue maybe mixed with some hawk turquoise so it goes from from a very dark, deep blue to a more teal-ish kind of blue. So a little bit of hot turquoise mixed into enchanted blue should be the next um, highlight. And I'm also gonna highlight up the stones. Um, and then ice blue, I'm gonna add some ice blue. That looks like it's the most extreme highlights for the robes. I'm, I'm also gonna use ice blue and skull white to highlight the crystal and um, yeah, the crystals crystal blade and any of the gemstones and I'm going to mix in a little bit of bleached bone to the light purple or warlock purple to highlight up those gemstones. For the wraith bone I'm going to highlight back up with denim stone then I'm gonna highlight up with um, Tau Sept ochre and then Eand and Dark Sun for the yellows. I'm also seeing a lot of really ugly mold lines that I gotta try to figure out how I can go back and fix. Okay, and the last thing for the gold, as the only metallic thing I'm gonna try to highlight with burnished gold, and if I still need to catch some more highlights, I'm gonna go up after that with mithril silver. So I will go and do that now, and we'll see what our model looks like in the next part of the video. All right, here's my warlock at this point. As you can see, I highlighted up everything that I shaded already. I did the crystal effect to the spear tip, and, um, I'll probably explain a little bit more on how I did that in later videos. Um, but a really great resource that I used was an old white dwarf that showed the how they do the crystal effect on um, on their uh, Eldar Far series, and so so I just kind of copied it uh, really briefly for those of you who are interested in copying my technique. I base coated it in hawk turquoise as you just saw, and then I built up with ice blue and then space was gray and then skull white on the edges and then I glazed everything with a really really watered down um, hawk turquoise mix with lots and lots of water and that's how I got the effect so yeah, I think it looks pretty good from table distance away it's not that good when you look at it up close it could use a little bit more shading but I think for for this model I think it's it's okay and then I used uh, enchanted blue and a little bit of hawk turquoise to to paint up the robes. I decided not to add any ice blue to the robes. I think the hawk turquoise makes it look really uh, oceanic, really water, like um, like an ocean. And um, with all the folds and everything, I think it, it reflects nicely. I think ice blue would have made it look too stark, giving it too much contrast. So I, I think I'm going to leave it there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to paint up some designs into the um, into the robe, maybe in the hems of the sleeves and uh, maybe some runes, some Eldar looking runes. I'm gonna base it off the GW website and um, I'm gonna finish the basing and then that should be it. So I'll show you, oh look what I, I messed up the staff. So I'll show you what that looks like when we come back for the wrap up of this how to paint an Eandon Warlock from the Farseer and Warlock Council box set. Alright players, so as you can see the glue is still drying on my base, but this is my f pretty much finished model for my Yanden Craft World Warlock. Um, I decided to leave the top knot um, 
with the blue wash and not highlight highlight it back up with white uh, you're free to do that if you want get get a little bit of a lighter tone in the top knot maybe just some highlights over there in the center part but uh, I decided that this is kind of how I'm gonna leave it for now I decided to go with a dark base to make the colors pop um, gray or, or camry brown ar around the rim and a little bit of color with the grass and grass green from Army Painters Battlefield set. But I'm pretty proud of this. It's it's a fine cast model, that uh, one of the ones that I unboxed a while ago. And um, there are still some crazy mold lines that I'm just, I, I don't know if I'm gonna get to them. Um, because every time I try to attack them with the edge of my hobby knife, I manage to chip and gouge more than I want to. So I might just leave this for now. Maybe um, I can get some of my, some of my good buddies who are really good at that really fine detailed cleaning work to, to go in for me the next time I uh, am at the hobby shop and uh, clean those up. But I'm pretty happy with it. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm going to, like I said, paint up all the Warlocks and Farseer with similar Wraithbone armor and weapons just to tie them all together. But I'm going to do different schemes. Like I think next I might do the Sanghan or um, the Ulthway, the Black and the the Black and the Bone, or a BL-10 because that's a good old favorite of mine. Um, I decided not to do any runes on the sides of the knees or the sides of the robes. It just uh, looked like it was too. It, it would be too busy, so I might change my mind and go back later. There's this great surface area, but for now I just kind of like the way the cloth falls um, over the knee. So let me know what you think and um, give me any feedback that you might have. I'm really happy with the model and the way it turned out and um, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.